The Motocross of Nations is an annual meeting separate from the Motocross World Championships. It is the only true team event of the season. The riders, three per country, ride not for personal glory but for national pride, representing their nations throughout the races. This unique event also allows European riders a chance to measure themselves against their American counterparts, most of whom prefer to compete in their own US series rather than the World Championships. 28 teams took part in the 1998 Grand Prix of Nations, the 52nd running of the event. This year's was held at Fox Hill, the home of the British Motocross Grand Prix. The track, which this year held the 125 and 250 Grand Prix together, is located near Swindon, some 100 kilometers west of London. The normally spectacular Fox Hill track was badly affected by extremely wet weather. Heavy rain, part of the effect of Hurricane George, swept the area and almost made the track unrideable. In conditions that would soon resemble the battlefield of the Somme, the 1997 winners Belgium would try to defend their title without Joël Smets. He was replaced for the weekend by a little-known 125 rider, Patrick Caps. Hello, I'm Stefan Everts. I'm 25 years old. I'm racing the eight-time Motocross of Nations. We were winner of uh, 1997 Motocross of Nations and I'm riding a Honda 250cc. It's always difficult to win the Motocross of Nations title, but the chances are for sure uh, less than we had with Joel. Uh, Joel was riding a warming up race, you know, uh, his last GP was end of August, so uh, he wanted to do a couple of races just to keep in, uh, in the rhythm and keep in uh, good condition and uh, you know, it, it ended up with an injury and that was very bad luck for the Belgium team. For me, this is the best race of the season. Uh, all the people coming here waving their own flags, you know, they're coming up for their country and I like to ride for my country and uh, it's something special. It gives me special feeling seeing all these people. It's busy, you know, all the people come from all over the world and uh, you just have to be here and you got to feel the atmosphere what the people make and that makes it so special. My name is Monique Bevoots. Uh, I ride Suzuki Winfield Bieffi and uh, I'm running for number three in the 500 class and uh, this is my ninth time Motocross Nations. Our new rider Caps is not so bad rider so uh, hopefully he can do good in the 125. I think uh, Stefan and me we have to score really good uh, tomorrow and uh, then there's still a possibility to win. It's one, one time in the year and it's a special uh, edition and uh, I like it very much. It's, an, it's a team, you know, we have some fun uh, for racing and everything, so uh, I like it this way. The host nation, third in 1997, had a strong lineup in all three classes and had a good chance for another podium finish. Riders Rob Herring, Carl Nunn and Paul Malin also had the advantage of racing in front of their home crowd. My name is Rob Herring, I'm racing for Great Britain, I ride a 500cc Honda and this is probably my 7th or 8th time in the motocross to nations. It's, re it's a very important race of the year, for me it's the most important individual race of the year and to race as a team you have to take into consideration the other team riders, you have to ride as a team where normally you ride as an individual. Um, so you have to think a little bit more about everybody else you know, as a, as a complete package. So um, it's a very prestigious event and I I'm very uh, honoured you know, to be chosen to race for Great Britain. This event here is the first time in 27 years I think we have, we've had the event in England so um, it's a great honour to, to be able to ride in your home country for the motocross to nations because for sure it will never happen to me again in my lifetime so um, it's a great honour but it's not difficult you know apart from the weather makes it difficult. Hello my name is Carl Nunn riding for Great Britain number seven for Team Cadbury's Bruce Tim Britton cars Yamaha. Everybody knows, you know, everybody knows I can do it, I know I can do it, and that's the main thing, you know, as long as I know I can go out there and put on a good show for, for the crowd and, and for the nation, you know. Um, I want to do the best I can for England and for myself and for the team, so, you know, I'll go out there and fight my hardest, whatever the conditions are like, and uh, hopefully win it for Great Britain. Alessio Chiodi led the Italian team, backed up by Bellometti and Puzza. The 125cc world champion was the only title holder present. Joel Smets and Sebastian Tortelli were both ruled out through injury. Despite Chiodi's presence, however, Italy were not expected to feature strongly. I'm Alessio Chiodi, I'm 25 years old and I ride for the Husqvarna Mardi Racing Team. This is my fifth motocross of nations and last year was my best result on the second step of the podium. Italy was very strong at the start, with Bartolini, Federici and myself. 
poi loro due si sono fatti Then male e si sono replaced by Cusa e Bella Messi comunque non siamo da sottovalutare I think it would be wrong to underestimate us because the weather is so bad oggi siamo andati molto forti quindi I think we will have good races tomorrow una bella gara domani After the break we check out the other top teams including the favorites the Americans so don't get stuck in the mud Strongest prepared for the clash of nations. But with Sebastian Tortelli, the world champion injured, Thierry Bettis, the French national champion, was a worthy stand-in, joining Michael Pichon and David Villemin, runner-up in the 125 CC World Championship. Last year I did quite well, even though I was a bit of a newcomer in my first motocross of the nation. I didn't know what to expect. This year I feel I'm well prepared and I think that our team will work well together. I hope that tomorrow we'll be able to finish on the podium. When I got a call at the beginning of the week I could hardly believe it. It was my first time in the motocross of nations. Racing for your country is really great and that is all I have left to do. I've raced for the world championship, I've raced a little in the USA, and the Nations was the only thing I haven't done. So I'm very happy. Now I've done just about everything in my career, and it's very satisfying. A lot of riders have been injured, including Sebastian. We have to realize that we will all be giving 100%. We are very motivated, David, Thierry and myself, to get the best possible result here. But the only thing that worries me is that this is the first time I've been in the Nations. Tomorrow I have to give it everything. I like the track. I'm used to the European circuits and I know Foxhill very well. I'm not using the same bike as I have in the States. They use lead-free fuel over there and run a little differently. But we've done a lot of testing, so I think it'll be okay. I have no problems with the track, I fare well in the turns. The starting order will be very determining. With so many top Europeans injured, the Americans start more than ever as favorites for the motocross of nations. However, despite the quality of riders in America, the team lineup includes two novices, Doug Henry and Ricky Carmichael. This inconvenience doesn't worry their Belgian manager, Roger de Coster. We have a very good team. All three are very happy to be here, and we didn't have to persuade them to come. They're hoping to help each other a lot. Ricky has been explaining the lines to Doug, because we found that, or we've realized that with all this rain, the lights have changed a lot. Hi, my name is John Dowd. I'm uh, from Team USA, and uh, I'm riding a Tivitti class, number 24. It's, it's a little different, you know, for me, I, I've, I haven't been here much. I raced once here last year and that was it, so, you know, it's, it's a little bit different. I think it's very, very close, you know, I mean, um, a lot of fast riders out here today, you know, and uh, never know what's going to happen out there tomorrow. I mean, I think, um, you know, there's lots of teams that could win and um, just a, a matter of having some good luck also, you know, good, good riders, good luck, staying out of trouble. Hello, my name is Ricky Carmichael and uh, I'm from USA. I'm from Florida, Tallahassee, Florida. And uh, I'm riding for Team USA. And uh, we have myself, my name is Ricky Carmichael and I have John Dowd as a teammate for the 250s and Doug Henry for the 500s. And uh, this is my first time here at the Motocross Nations and I'm, I'm very happy to be a part of the team and uh, 
hopefully I can do some good for him. It's kind of fun for me being the first time. Maybe if it was my second time, it'd be more of a, you know, I want to win now, but I'm having fun also being my first time. The Sebastian Tortelli's 250cc World Championship was the third world title for the JHK team run by Dutchman Jan de Groot, which had previously tasted success with Stefan Everts in 250 in 1995 and in 125 with Tortelli in 1976. This is a fine record for a private team which did not have a factory machine this season, but a highly modified production Kawasaki. The machine was, however, very much a match for Stefan Everts and his factory Honda, the acknowledged performance leaders in 250s. Above all, this performance reflects the talents of Jan de Groot's team in preparation, but also the choices of technical partners which the team has made and to allow them to take on the world championships and win. No team can truly compete without these vital specialist partners. They bring levels of expertise no team could possess in every field. Their experience and knowledge allow them to advise the team and rider on how to get the best from man and machine, proving that the sport is still very much a team effort. For instance, the suppliers of the exhaust systems for Sebastian Tortelli's Kawasaki have won two world championships this year. They also supplied systems to the 500cc world champion Joel Smets. They may not be in the spotlight very often, but they are an important factor in the tally of Grand Prix wins. Yeah, it's a long history, I think. It's a long time ago when, uh, when we met Piero from Spes, and he asked me to do something for us. Always we do it by ourselves, and the time, you know, it's difficult to find all the time to do. So then we start to work with Spes, and he make, uh, from beginning, work together, and then he make a really good pipe for us. So now maybe for already 15 years, we work together with Spes. My future with Spes, you never know, but so long as I know at this moment, uh, I want to, kin to continue with, uh, with Spes, because it helps us to, for winning with the bike and uh, preparation together, it's, it's really good. Yes, I think so. It's one of the best pipes uh, you can buy for everybody. We did a lot of developing together uh, with our bikes and with Spes, so it helps the, the local riders and the, the non-professional riders for sure with the helping with the power for the bike. For the bike, everything is important. So as well the, the pipes, and we are really close working together with Spes. We have the same dyno as, as Spes, so we do the engine work and then go to Spes and develop the, the pipes on our engines. That makes the best uh, complete bike, I think. The rain barely stopped falling all weekend during the motocross of nations. Fox Hill, normally one of the best circuits on the World Championship calendar, was turned into a swamp. It was tough for the spectators as well, but tougher still for the riders, who found the track physically exhausting. Just look at these weather statistics. When the gates dropped for the first race featuring the 125s and the open category, rain and fog made it very, very tricky. Johansson, number 12, grabbed the whole shot but had a heavy crash in the first turn. He was unhurt but did not restart. Herring found himself leading from King, Kusirek and Henry. Herring managed in the atrocious conditions to hold on to his lead for the first lap. He was under attack from the New Zealander Darrell King, number 22, who managed to find a way past on his Husqvarna. 
Several laps later, American Doug Henry, 25, also managed to find a way past into second place. As King led out front, Spaniard Francisco Garcia Vico, number 46, was staging a superb recovery, taking third place. Conditions were getting worse by the lap. The thick mud and deep ruts accounted for many entries. Only 11 riders would finish on the lead lap. Garcia Vico, having first ride on a 400 Yamaha, threaded his way through the muddy battlefield. Here he deals with Doug Henry, number 25. Behind Garcia Vico, number 46, and Henry, 25, was Miska Altanen, number 58, the Finn, holding on to third place. On a track that simply got worse and worse, Francisco Garcia Vico started the final lap on his way to victory. Having survived the terrible mud so far, the Spaniard made a mistake in the final corners. American Doug Henry was the man who finally made it to the checkered flag in first place. But he had to be persuaded that he had won. Garcia Vico claimed second, distorted having lost near certain victory. Finn Miska Altanen completing the podium in third place. So the Belgians led the overall standings thanks to the fourth place of Patrick Caps and Malik Bevert sixth place. Team USA was second, Henry winning and Carmichael finishing 11. It was a surprise to find the Spanish in third place, largely thanks to Garcia Vico. Now the British team was fourth with Rob Herring collecting third and Carl Nunn 21st. Absent from the top eight was a much favoured French team, ninth after the first heat. Don't run away. In a minute, we have the final two heats in the Motocross of Nations. See you in a minute. Rain had stopped for a moment as the riders started the second heat, but the track was badly cut up and barely rideable in some places. The whole shot went to Stefan Everts, number two, from Swiss rider Rolf Dupasquier, Germany's pit bearer, and the Czech Michal Kadilcek. The Belgian immediately opened up a lead over his rivals. On this track, Everts had a major advantage being up in front, choosing his lines carefully and riding at his own pace. Even he was not able to avoid the mud thrown up by the other riders. Behind the Belgian champion, the carnage continued. Marco Kovalainen, number 57, was second, ahead of American John Dowd, number 24. And Dupasquier, number 60, crashed. Many other riders hit the mud in the first corners. In these conditions, Stefan Evert simply tried to hold on to his lead and rode carefully, managing to stay out of trouble. Which wasn't the case for his teammate Caps, number one, who clashed with the Slovak Bucenic. Kovalainen, the Finn, was in a surprising second place. Italian Alessandro Puzza only survived four laps. Stefan Evertz continued his one-horse race, opening up a lead of more than four seconds on the second-placed rider. Fixed on the first lap, Frenchman Michel Pichon, number 15, was having a good race and would finally finish the heat in second place. Pete Vera, number 18, ended up crashing and couldn't hold back his rivals. The German restarted and would finish the race in fifth place. Frenchman David Villemin was held up after clashing with Czech rider Cepelak. <laughs> By mid-race, conditions were so bad that several riders found themselves stuck on the track, including Stefan Everts. Even the best riders were in trouble. Here, Pete Bearer has to turn round and try again before he can progress. David Villemin fared less well and was forced to retire after this clash with Dowd, with his exhaust broken. Conditions were now so bad that the organizers had no option but to show the red flags and bring the race to a halt. Stefan Everts claimed the Heat 2 win by a technical knockout. The Belgian had been over one minute ahead when the race was stopped. Frenchman Michel Pichon was second, Finn Kovalainen third. 
Evan Everts helped Belgium to retain the lead, even though teammate Caps had retired. The USA was still second, but Great Britain moved up into third, thanks to a fourth-placed finish by Paul Malin. Kovalainen's third place moved the Finns right into contention. The French were fifth thanks to Pichon's second place. Italy scored nothing and dropped three positions. This was a really tough heat for the 125 riders. The power of their machines not enough to cope with the Fox Hill mud. Because of the terrible track conditions, the start of the third and final heat was delayed for 30 minutes to modify the course. Bert Deckenbach, number 19, grabbed the whole shot from Marnik Bevert, Darrell King and Michael Pichon. As the German escaped out front, Dutch rider Gert Jan van Dorn, number 31, was fighting for second place with New Zealander Darrell King, number 22. <laughs> Stefan Evert, six after the first lap, began to fight his way back towards the leaders. Here he fights van Dorn for third place. As determined and confident as he had been in the previous heat, Everts passed his rivals one by one, catching Eckenbach on the fourth lap. The Belgian took control of the race on the same lap, flying towards his second heat win of the day. Eckenbach lost precious time restarting on the next lap, whose Kvarna rider would finish sixth. Out in front, Everts acknowledged the soaked British fans. With the second win and tenth place for Marnik Bevert's, Belgian was assured of overall victory. Stefan Evertz was the key to the win, proving yet again that he's one of the quickest motocrossers in the world. At the finish, he fell into the arms of Joël Smet, the captain of the Belgian team. As Marnik Bevertz arrived at the finish line, the team exploded with joy. Belgium had claimed its 12th motocross of nations. Winners at home in 1997, the Belgian riders took their second consecutive at Fox Hill, proving that they are the men to beat in all classes. The other podium places were taken by Finland and New Zealand. So, a significant win for the Belgians, untroubled by any other nation during the weekend. Holland finished fourth and pushed hot favourites, the USA, back into fifth position. Disappointment for the British team, eighth on home ground. Small reward for the 25,000 fans who turned out to watch in truly terrible conditions. Let's hear from the winners. I think uh, the victory in Belgium is always special because you can only have motocross the nations maybe in 15, 20 years time in your own country and then have the chance to win it and we won it and uh, it was something special and it's nice to win today and uh, but last year was a little bit better. It was not hard but uh you have to go on going and don't make any mistakes and sometimes my um, eye was, was uh, full of stones and, and dirt I couldn't see anymore so that was uh, the most difficult thing. It's great, we came to Britain a little unsure after Joel Smets was forced to pull out. I chose Patrick Caps for the 125 because I expected good results from the others and I had confidence in them. I told Patrick that all he had to do was to have a good race. He really surprised me because he had the race of his life today. Stefan was magnificent. Malnik was great. It's a fantastic team. A big thank you to Stefan and Marnie, who looked after Patrick really well. They helped him with encouragement and advice, and that helped the team spirit.